Instead of downloading email attachments to OneDrive or SharePoint just so you can add them to a planner task, automate it. In this Microsoft Power Automate tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a flow that will take your email attachments and add them to a planner task. All you need to do is copy a link to a task, forward the email to yourself, and the attachments will be saved onto SharePoint and attached to your planner task. Stay tuned till the end of the video where I'll show you how to use trigger conditions so this automation only runs when specific conditions are met. In Power Automate, I have an automated flow that I use to return an email message ID. I turn this flow on whenever I need to grab a message ID from an email so that I can build a flow using a manual trigger. This way, I don't need to leave Power Automate to send myself an email just to run a test on my flow. It really speeds up the flow building process, especially when you plan to use the when new email arrives trigger. I'm using a compose action to store the message ID dynamic content from the flow trigger. Run a test. In Planner, I'm going to copy a task link to my clipboard. In Outlook, I'm going to forward this email to myself and replace the subject line with the task link. Review the outputs of the Compose action. Copy the message ID to your clipboard. Create a new instant cloud flow. Give your flow a name and select the manual trigger. I'll be using the classic designer as the new designer is still a little bit buggy. Since we'll need to use the message ID in a couple actions, I'll be using a compose action to store the message ID. This way I can use the output of the compose action in those actions. Add a get email v2 action. In the message ID field, insert the output from the compose action above. Ensure you are including attachments. Add another Compose action. Remember to rename your actions to keep your flow organized. The subject of this email contains the planner task link. Within this link is the task ID. It's located here between the forward slash after the word task and before the question mark. First, we need to split the subject line at the question mark. Add an expression. Use the split function. The split function takes two parameters. The first parameter is a string of text. The second is the separator. Click on the dynamic content tab. In the split function, insert the subject dynamic content from the get email v2 action. Add a comma and single quotes. Enter a question mark between the single quotes. Save your flow and run a test. The split function has returned the subject line which was originally a string of text as an array. The first item in the array is the line here with the text right before the question mark. The second item is the text after the question mark. To extract the planner task, we need to return the first item from the array. Click on the expression label to edit it. Wrap your expression in the first function. At the start of the expression, type in first with an opening parenthesis. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression and enter a closing parenthesis. Don't forget to press update. Run a test. Now we need to split this text. Because we only want the ID which appears after the forward slash, we can split this text by the forward slash. Wrap this expression in a split function. Place the cursor at the start of the expression and type in split with an opening parenthesis. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression. Enter a comma and single quotes. Enter a forward slash between the single quotes. Add a closing parenthesis. Press update and run a test. Let's take a look at the outputs. The planner ID is here. We need to return the last item of this array. To do that, wrap the entire expression in the last function. At the start of the expression, enter last with an opening parenthesis. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression and enter a closing parenthesis. Press update and run a test.
let's take a look at the outputs. To verify that this will return the correct task, add a get a task action and a get task details action to your flow. In the task ID field, select enter custom value and insert the output from the compose action above. Run a test. Verify these actions are getting the correct task and task details. I'll add a scope action to group these actions together. The scope action is optional. I like to use them in my flows to easily collapse multiple actions so it doesn't take up too much vertical space. I'll drag these actions into this scope action. For this flow, I'll be saving the attachments in a folder with the same name as the planner task. To ensure that there isn't any conflict with folder names, I'll also append the task created date to the end of the folder name. Add a compose action to store the folder name. This compose action is optional. However, I find that the cursor can sometimes jump around in the folder path field of the create file action that we'll be adding in a bit, making it difficult to type. First, add a forward slash. Insert the title dynamic content from the get a task action. I'm going to add an underscore and append the created date to the folder name. I want to format the date, so I'll need to insert an expression. Use the format date time function. Insert the created date dynamic content from the get a task action. Add a comma and single quotes. In between the single quotes, enter a date format. I'll use this date format. Run a test. Add a get attachment v2 action. Insert the output from the compose action that is storing the message ID. In the attachment ID field, insert the attachments attachment ID dynamic content. The get attachment v2 action will automatically nest itself inside and apply to each action. This is because the attachments dynamic content returns an array of items. Each time this action loops through an attachment, it'll return that attachment. For more tips and tricks when it comes to the apply to each action, check out this tutorial. Add a create file action. Because I want to create my attachment in my SharePoint site, I'll be using the SharePoint action. If you want to create the attachments in your OneDrive, you can select the OneDrive action. Customize this flow to suit your needs. Select the site address. For the folder path, select the document library. Insert the outputs from the compose action above. In the file name field, select the name dynamic content from the get attachment v2 action. In the file content field, select the content bytes dynamic content from the get attachment v2 action. Run a test. The folder has been created and all the attachments have been created as well. It's important to note that if you are creating an attachment with a name that already exists, the create file action will overwrite your original file. In a different video, I cover how to check if a file exists already. Check out that tutorial here. I'm going to delete this folder for now so that I can run another test later without running into any issues. Add a get file properties action. Select your site address, list name, and insert the item ID dynamic content from the action above. Add an initialize variable action to your flow. Variables can only be initialized in the root of the flow. I'll add mine here. Give your variable a name and for the type, select array. At the end of the apply to each loop, we'll need to append the attachment details to the array. Add an append to array variable action. I'm going to copy the array structure from the update task details action. Add an update task details action. Type in placeholder text into these two fields. 
Click on the three dots of this action and select Peak Code. The reference array is here. Highlight the content between the square brackets and copy it to your clipboard. Delete this action for now. In the Append to Array Variable action, paste the content from your clipboard. Replace the text between the double quotes with the appropriate dynamic content from the Get Files Properties action. For the alias, insert the file name with extension dynamic content. For the resource link, insert the link to item dynamic content. Add a compose action outside of the flow. This is optional. However, I like to use compose actions to view the output of my variables in my flows, especially when I'm using the append to array variable action. This compose action will help me to verify that I've collected everything. Run a test. Add an update task details action to your flow. You'll want to add this outside of the apply to each action. In the task ID field, select enter custom value and insert the output from the compose action above that is storing your task ID. This is why it's important to rename your action so that it's clear which dynamic content belongs to which action. Click on this icon to switch to input the array. Insert the array variable here. Run a test. Let's check the planner task. The attachments have been added. Now that the flow is ready to go, we can replace the manual trigger with an automated trigger. Personally, I like to keep a copy of the manually triggered flow so that I can run tests and troubleshoot should I need to adjust my flow at a later date. I've created a copy of the flow. I'll delete the manual trigger and replace it with the when a new email arrives v3 trigger. Ensure that you are including attachments. In the Compose action, I'll remove the manually entered message ID and replace it with the message ID dynamic content from the flow trigger. Now that we've replaced the manual trigger with the automated trigger, the get email v2 action is redundant. Before we delete it, we'll need to update each action that used the dynamic content from the get email v2 action with the corresponding dynamic content from the flow trigger. In this Compose action, edit the expression. Highlight the subject dynamic content reference from the get email v2 action and replace it with the subject dynamic content from the flow trigger. Don't forget to press update. Verify the expression has been updated by hovering over the expression label. In the apply to each action, remove this dynamic content and insert the attachments dynamic content from the flow trigger. Ensure you are selecting the dynamic content from the correct action. In the get attachments v2 action, Remove the dynamic content label from the attachment ID field and replace it with the attachments attachment ID dynamic content from the flow trigger. Delete the get email v2 action. Since we only want to run the automation when a task URL is in the subject line, we'll need a way to filter out those emails. You might be thinking that you need to specify a recipient and a subject filter. The problem with this approach is that the flow will run every time a new email arrives. It'll have to check if the recipient is yourself and if the subject matches your filter criteria. To prevent this flow from running if it doesn't meet your filter criteria, use trigger conditions instead. For testing purposes, I'm going back to my initial flow. I use this flow often for testing. I just turn it off when I'm done. Add a filter array action. I like to use a filter array action to quickly compose my trigger conditions. Use the value fields. In the first value field, insert the two dynamic content from the flow trigger. Leave the operator as is equal to and insert your email address into the second value field. Click on the three dots and select peak code. 
copy the expression including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of the flow trigger and select settings. Click add to add a trigger condition. Note that this flow will only trigger if the expressions added here return true. Paste the content from your clipboard. Go back to the filter array action. Remove the two dynamic content and insert the subject dynamic content. Change the operator to either contains or starts with. Customize this condition to suit your requirements. I'll use contains. Insert the text you'd like to filter for. Click on the three dots and select peak code and copy the expression including the at symbol to your clipboard. Go back to the settings of your flow trigger and add another condition. Delete the filter array action and let's run a test. First, I'll send a regular email. The flow doesn't seem to be running. I'll send another email. This time, I'll use a task link as a subject line. The flow was triggered. I'll copy these expressions from this test flow into my main flow trigger. Because I've added trigger conditions, I don't need to specify the recipient or subject filter in the trigger. To improve user experience with this flow, you might consider adding a notification after the attachments have been added. This can be in the form of a response to the original email or a Teams notification. You can also move the email from your inbox into another folder. Customize this flow to suit your needs. What other planner automations would help you streamline your daily workflow? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Do you want to quickly create planner tasks from a SharePoint list or Excel table? If so, you might be interested in checking out this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next Power Automate tutorial. Thanks for watching.